Hello, welcome to this Oracle Learning tutorial. I'm going to walk you through a sample project showing how to build an image gallery, iOS application, and Swift using Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. My name is Fred Brown, and I'm a developer and architect on the Oracle Content Management iOS team. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is obtain the source code for the tutorial. It can be found at github.com slash oracle dash samples slash OCE iOS gallery sample. Tap the code button and then copy the clone URL from GitHub. Once you've got that URL copied, open up a terminal window and clone the Git repository. When the cloning process is finished, change your current directory to OCE iOS Gallery Sample, where you'll find the project for the sample code. Open gallerydemo.xcode project to open Xcode and load the sample code. Providing credentials. Before you can run the sample application, you need to provide some information that tells the Oracle Content Management SDK where your data is located. If you open the source directory, you'll see a file named credentials.json. This JSON file contains two data elements in there, the URL, which represents your Oracle Content Management instance, and the channel token, which is associated with the publishing channel where you've published all your assets. The Content Management SDK is only going to read published data, so both of these pieces of information are vital. With our credentials configuration out of the way, let's talk briefly about the structure of the code in both the Content Management SDK and the sample application. This short video can't possibly cover every aspect of the tutorial, so it's important to show you how the code is organized. That way, you can more easily investigate questions that you may have as you dive deeper into the tutorial. Let's start with the Content Management SDK. The SDK is delivered as a Swift package, and the gallery tutorial has identified it as a dependency. That means when you open the tutorial project, the SDK is downloaded automatically. When you look at the package.swift file in the SDK, you can see that it exposes three different libraries, Oracle Content Core, Delivery, and Test. This tutorial utilizes both Core, which contains common code used by multiple libraries, and Delivery, which provides the methods and models necessary to request published data from an Oracle Content Management instance. So, how do you know what information is available to request? Every single request object or service, and we'll use those terms interchangeably, can be found in Oracle Content Delivery in a file underneath the Interfaces directory. You'll see that there are interfaces defined for requesting assets and taxonomies, as well as performing downloads. Let's look quickly at a single taxonomies request. Opening the taxonomies interface, we first see that every method is wrapped into an extension of Delivery API. Delivery API serves as the namespace for every request that you'll make. Next, we see that the first method available is a class function named list taxonomies. This method takes no parameters and it returns a request object with the name list taxonomies. That request object is generic over the model type taxonomies, plural. When we invoke this request object, the data returned on success will be of type taxonomies. So what does this data look like? Well, you could always command click to jump directly to its definition, but you could also navigate to the model folder and find all of the model objects defined by the SDK. Here you'll see the file taxonomies.swift. For this tutorial, the most important property is items. This is the collection of returned taxonomy, singular, objects. Each taxonomy returned is represented by an identifier, name, 
description, and other properties. Let's go back to the taxonomies interface. Remember that list taxonomies returns a request object or service of type list taxonomies. Again, you could command click to jump directly to the service, but instead let's expand the services folder and then expand the taxonomy subfolder. Here we'll see list taxonomies.swift. This service is exceptionally short, and that's because most functionality is encapsulated into compositional elements that are used by multiple services. Compositional elements come in two flavors, builder components and invocation verbs. We'll see how those work in just a minute, but it's important to know they are assigned to a service through confirmation to various protocols. The list taxonomy service, for example, conforms to the implements overrides builder component as well as the implements fetch listing invocation verb. Feel free to explore the various compositional elements available. Now that you know how the SDK services request services, let's talk about invoking them from the tutorial application. Every call into the SDK is encapsulated inside a singleton object named Gallery Networking. If we open gallerynetworking.swift, we'll see that, one, it's a singleton, two, it conforms to the gallery networking protocol, and three, it surfaces four methods that are called from the application itself. We'll dive deeper into some of these calls in just a few minutes, but if we look at the first part of the fetch initial data function, we can see a call into the content management SDK. You can see that the namespace is delivery API, you can see the request object is list taxonomies. You can see a builder component of limit 50. And finally, you can see the invocation verb of fetch next async, which indicates that we're utilizing Swift concurrency. It's also worth noting that any request service that starts with list will have an invocation verb that starts with fetch next. We'll come back to this file in more detail but let's talk now about how the application is structured and where calls are made to gallery networking. It's probably best right now to jump back to the top of the project. I'd like to point out that the tutorial application actually consists of two parts, the application and a gallery sample local package. The application is just the launching mechanism for the tutorial. It contains some common elements that are necessary for the configuration process. But it's the gallery sample local package that's the actual UI and business logic of the tutorial. We packaged it like this so that the gallery code could be pulled into a different, larger project very easily if I needed to. At the highest level, our gallery code represents each UI element as a Swift UI view, and each view contains a corresponding model object. Communication from the UI to the model is performed by sending an action to the model. Let's use gallery main.swift as an example. We can immediately see this is a Swift UI view. And we can also see that it declares a model object property of type gallery main model. When we look at the body of the view, we can see that the topmost element is a navigation stack, which contains a task modifier that'll run when the view first appears. Inside that task modifier, we call the send method in our model and pass it in the fetch initial data action. We can look at the send function by opening gallery main model. There are several different actions supported by this particular model. While other models will support different actions, the pattern's consistent throughout the sample application. It's important to note that each model attempts to modify state only from inside this method whenever possible. This will ultimately lead to a better ability to write tests that validate the behavior of our model. If we look at the switch statement and the handling of the fetch initial data action, 
we can see that it's calling an internal fetch initial data method. And that method is calling into the networking singleton, which is declared as a property in the model. Okay, so how does the UI get presented to begin with? To answer this, we go back to the application code's main entry point, defined in gallery demo.swift. The body of this structure creates the initial page, an instance of gallery main, which we just looked at. In the initializer of the gallery demo app, we'll see two important assignments being made. Onboarding.URL provider is assigned an instance of the My URL provider class. And onboarding.logger is assigned an instance of the My Logger class. Together, these two assignments represent the onboarding process that may be used by any third-party code to consume the content management SDK. Each time an SDK request object needs to build a URL, it utilizes the URL and channel token surfaced by the onboarding.url provider. You've already specified this information when you modified credentials.json. However, we need a way to provide that information to the SDK. My URL provider implements the Oracle Content Core URL provider protocol. It can read the values from the credentials.json file and then expose them in the URL and delivery channel token properties. Although my URL provider is not strictly necessary, because any request object that conforms to implements overrides can specify URL and token values on a call-by-call -call basis, providing it as part of the onboarding process greatly simplifies the call sites for each request made. The other part of the onboarding process is the assignment being made to onboarding.logger. The Content Management SDK doesn't provide any specific logging implementation. Each consumer of the SDK may have their own requirements for logging. So instead, the SDK exposes the onboarding.logger property where you can inject your own logging implementation that meets your needs. When the SDK determines that it should perform a logging operation, it calls into the onboarding.logger property and passes in the appropriate data. You can then do whatever you like with that data as it meets your business needs. When we look at MyLogger, we see that it implements the Oracle Content Core logging provider protocol, and it provides implementations for the four exposed methods. In this tutorial, we're simply using print statements to print log messages to the console. That's generally a bad idea. In a production environment, instead, you could utilize universal logging, core data, or whatever logging mechanism you like. The benefit of the SDK is that each individual customer can provide their own logging implementation and not be subject to some arbitrary decision made by the SDK itself. Okay, that's a lot of information. Let's start putting the pieces together and take a deeper dive into how some of the requests turn into our sample application. Let's go back to gallery main. Remember that we're sending the fetch initial data action when the view is presented. Once we're done fetching data, our model state will be updated and we'll present each of our model.items as a gallery category card. Let's see how we get to that point. In gallery main model, we'll request data and assign it to our items property. That request is really just a call into gallery networking's fetch initial data method. Note that this method is ultimately going to return an array of gallery category objects. So everything that we do in fetch initial data is designed to populate this array. If we look at gallery category, we can see that it contains a category name and a list of asset objects assigned to that category. So let's jump back into fetch initial data. 
Now, this is definitely the most complex part of the tutorial, but we can break it down into three slightly easier components. First, we need to find all of the taxonomies available to our publishing channel. Next, we need to request the list of taxonomy categories for each taxonomy that we found. Finally, we need to obtain the list of assets for each taxonomy category retrieved and transform the results into an array of gallery category objects. We'll start from the top, obtaining the list of taxonomies. Our namespace is delivery API. Our request object is list taxonomies. For purposes of this demo, we limit the number of taxonomies to 50 using the limit builder component. Finally, we use the fetch next async invocation verb to utilize Swift concurrency and await the results. Important note, since we populated onboarding.url provider, the content SDK knows the appropriate instance URL and the channel token to use. So we don't need to specify it here. Next, we need to iterate over each taxonomy returned. Remember, the collection of returned objects is contained in the items property of the result. We need to transform our array from an array of taxonomy objects to an array of tasks, where each task is invoking its own request service. We do that by mapping over each element in the items property. We call the create list taxonomy categories task for each element. Create list taxonomy categories task returns a task. That task uses the taxonomy identifier to create an SDK service request. Again, the namespace is delivery API. The request object in this case is list taxonomy categories, which takes a taxonomy identifier as a parameter. We use several builder components to limit and order the results. And then finally, we use the fetch next async invocation verb to obtain results and then return the items property. Remember, this is an array of taxonomy category objects. If we go back to the original call site, we can see that when the map operation completes, we'll have an array which contains elements that themselves are arrays. This doubly nested array is exactly what we do not want. So enter flat map to the rescue. Flat map will flatten our array of arrays by awaiting each task's value. The net result is taxonomy categories will contain a single array of taxonomy category objects. It's also very important to note that as of this moment in time, the Swift language doesn't provide a flat map implementation that supports async transformations. Therefore, we created our own implementation of flat map available in sequence plus extension.swift. The final portion of fetch initial data is to list the assets assigned to each taxonomy category. So we transform taxonomy categories, the array of taxonomy category objects, into an array of tasks, again, that each execute an SDK request. This time, the transformation function is create gallery category task. We see that we're returning a task, and inside that task, we make a call to the list assets request object. We use builder components to provide a custom query, specify that all fields should be included in the response, and limit our results to 100 objects. We use the invocation verb fetch next async to submit the request. The most interesting part of this request is the query object itself. Now, you could certainly provide your own raw text query using a different builder component, but you might find it a little bit easier to build complex queries using a query builder. Here we build two query nodes and join them using the AND operator. The ID node specifies that the taxonomies, categories, nodes, ID field should be equal to the taxonomy category identifier. 
The type node specifies that the type should be equal to the value image. We use a query builder to join these two components together. You can see a number of different examples of building queries in QueryTest.Swift, available in Oracle Content Core Tests. So back to our task. When data is retrieved, we construct a gallery category object using the taxonomy categories identifier and name, along with the items that were returned from list assets. When we return to the original call site, we know that following the map operation, we have an array of tasks, each of which that will eventually turn into a gallery category object. We need to await the task completion, and we perform a custom version of TriMap that supports async transformations. Again, this is a custom implementation that's available in Sequence Plus Extension. At this point, we can finally return an array of gallery category objects, which will ultimately be assigned to gallery main model's items property, which provides the data to use in our UI so that a gallery category card may be displayed for each taxonomy category. Gallery category card is another object that follows our same design pattern. It's a Swift UI view that has its own model object and invokes data retrieval through a task modifier, which sends the fetch action to the model. Here, our model object is gallery category card model. Looking at the send method, there's only one action supported. Here, we'll fetch a hero image for the category, as well as thumbnails for the second, third, and fourth assets assigned to this category. Both the hero image and the collection of thumbnails are of type thumbnail image state, an enumerated type that, in its happy path, will eventually contain a UI image. We use this enumeration in the tutorial project because it provides an easy way for SwiftUI to handle placeholder images, real images, and error states. So let's go back to the SIN method and look at the hero image retrieval. The process is exactly the same for the other thumbnail images. So in the interest of time, we'll deep dive into only the hero image download. The fetch hero image async method calls into networking.downloadThumbnail. Download thumbnail takes as parameters an asset, a cache provider instance, and a cache key. Now, a full deep dive into cache providers is probably beyond the scope of this tutorial. The important thing to note is that this tutorial provides gallery file cache, a class that conforms to Oracle Content Core cache provider. Gallery file cache provides implementations for functions like find and store, which allows the SDK download operations to interface with your existing cache implementation. We'll cover the cache provider in more detail in future videos. So our download thumbnail method creates the download thumbnail request object, but this time no builder components are used. Since the request starts with download, we use an invocation verb that also starts with download. We use download async to identify that Swift concurrency is used for the download. We pass nil to the progress closure because we're not presenting any progress UI in this application. You could, however, pass in your own closure, which would be called by the SDK as your download progresses towards 100% completion. When our download has successfully completed, our download result will contain a URL and a collection of headers that are returned from the download operation. And we're not using the headers as part of this tutorial, but there are certain cases where you might find that information useful. We take the download result URL and use that to build a UI image that is used to create our thumbnail image state return value. Downloading the other thumbnail images follows exactly the same process. So 
Once we have all the data, our card can now be displayed. In Gallery Category Card, we see that our body is a navigation link. This means when you tap on a card, we'll navigate to the Category Assets view. The UI consists of a grid of our thumbnail images. Our hero image is displayed on the first grid row and our thumbnails on the second. The remaining UI elements in the sample application continue to follow the same exact pattern. Create a Swift UI view and model, send actions to the model, call into gallery networking, and update the UI accordingly. So there are two methods in gallery networking that we haven't discussed yet. The download medium JPEG rendition method and the download preview method. When we previously called download thumbnail, the content management SDK retrieved a special rendition of the asset named thumbnail. Our two remaining methods still both perform download operations, but they differ in the file that is actually requested from your content management instance. Download medium JPEG rendition uses the download rendition service object. The parameters indicate a request for the rendition with the name medium and of type JPEG. The functionality is otherwise equivalent to that of the download thumbnail. We use the download medium JPEG rendition call to display the gallery of images in a taxonomy category. We want the medium rendition because these images will display in a larger size, so we'd prefer to use a slightly higher quality image. The final method in gallery networking is download preview, which is used when you click on an individual asset to display a large version. It uses the download native request object to request, you guessed it, the native rendition of the asset. And that concludes this video tutorial for building an iOS gallery application in Swift using Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. For more information, please follow the link available at the GitHub project page to the tutorial documentation available at oracle.com. Thank you for watching.